I am turning it. Marze Scott is coming in so that she can bring in, well, the next two people who she will tell you who that is. All right. Well, good afternoon. Good morning, family, Cavalcade family. I am Marze Scott, national bestseller of Gemini Rising. We had this introduction earlier, but I get the honor this time, this day, to introduce and present to others uh, the tribe chief and her partner in crime and the <laughs> <laughs> or partner in Christ, depending on who you're talking to. Um, Nelena Kai and Janice Allen. Nelena Kai is the USA Today, Essence, and national best-selling and award-winning author of several controversial women's fiction, contemporary fiction, Christian fiction, romance, suspense, and science fiction novels that plumb the depth of unique love triangles and women's issues, which my favorite, my personal favorite of Nalena Kai's is uh, Rich Woman's Fetish. And she, she's always in disbelief that I like things this dark, but I love that book. Um, best-selling author Janice M. Allen is living proof that it's never too late to grow and blossom. She uncovered her gift of writing in 2014 when she co-authored Bearing It All the ins and outs of publishing a self-help manual for writers. Her foray into fiction began with her first novel, No Right Way to Do a Wrong Thing, also my favorite book, <laughs> Uncle Bubba, <laughs> which was released in 2018 and became an AALBC bestseller. She followed that with the short story, Cayenne. Janice and eight other authors collaborated to co-write a romance novel called, of the series of Kings of the Castle published in 2019 Janice's novel, King of Lawndale, is one of the eight follow-up novels released in that series. Yay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't tell you how I uh, am. It's a phenomenal experience to be friends and family with these two ladies. Um, I have learned so much from both of them. Uh, Nelena is very patient with me and only she knows how many gray hairs I have given her. Bless her whole soul. <laughs> and Janice is always so very kind. And Janice is always so very encouraging with um, telling me, you know, to just do what feels right and 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 then We'll edit it all later. Um, very inspiring. Her story, her story in mind, uh, as far as when we started writing, we both started writing kind of late and uh, later in life and just getting to a place of creativity. But um, if I may start with Janice, can you tell us about how that process was prompted? <laughs> that process was prompted by, oh, and by the way, you look gorgeous. Oh, that you. Uh, process was prompted by Nelena Kai. Um, we met at a law firm and um, I, I learned that she was an author and I, I loved reading. So, and I had never met a, an author. So I was just thrilled, you know, to, to meet someone who was creative, who was doing this stuff that I loved getting the products at. And um, after, after that, I start, well, long story short, in, in the course of time, um, she trained me to be her editor. Um, and as I was editing her books and, you know, making revisions and adding things or whatever, she said, you know, you can write, you just don't know it. So she kind of put it out there and, and challenged me. Um, I'll say, I'll say, uh, well, she'll say nudge, I'll say pushed, um, but she, she challenged me. Perspective, exactly. Tomato, tomato. But she uh, challenged me to start writing, uh, to write a novel. And and I was just hung up. Well, I, I have no idea. What would I write about that someone would even want to know about? And she said, you just start with the life experience that you had and you build on that. So because I had um, issues with fertility and wanted children so badly and never was able to have them, I had all the treatments and everything, you know, just like five times going through in virtual 
in vitro fertilization only to be told, you know, five different times, no, it didn't take, no, you're not pregnant. So um, going through that was the start of my first book. That was the premise. And then I uh, built a whole lot of extra drama around it. So she was the catalyst. And, and I, I, I will tell anybody that we, we all have a gift, it, it, whether it's writing, whether it's cooking, whether it's speaking, you know, building things, we all have a gift, but not all of us are able to look inside and know what that gift is. Sometimes it takes someone from the outside to identify it and then even to activate it in you because I didn't think anything. I admired her gift, but I didn't think anything of mine. Um, and, and she is, is that person. She's not the one who feels um, competition and all. Well, I can't make you better because then it may make me less better. She never is that way. She's always that person who is pushing everybody. She's behind you. You know, I want the very best for you. And that's who she is. And that's what prompted my writing. Okay, so that actually is a good segue into my next question, Elena. Um, because you also have the gift of writing, you seem to have the gift of seeing gifts in others. How, how is that you can look at someone or listen to how they're speaking or how they review a book and say, this person should write? Because I think what commonly with most of us in Tribe, it's a matter of not us always uh, thinking that we got chops for it, but you see something even in the raw talent. How is, what is that like? Like, what do you see? Well, for me, it is, I think it has everything to do with God. God oh. brings the people into my life that is supposed to take this journey with me and become family, uh, become the next lesson uh, or the next blessing. <laughs> um, my journey into, I never aspired to be an author. So this journey was all new for me. But also too, I think of writing more than just about the money ends of things because if we were about the money, we would have been out of this a long time ago. It has been the experiences and uh, bringing, helping, being the midwife to other people, helping them to birth their books. Sometimes it's a painful birth. Sometimes they in labor 26 hours. Sometimes they <laughs> pop them out within two hours. Sometimes they need an epidural. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's funny. I've never used this analogy before. So this is kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, but each one, when they finally have that baby and they're holding it in there, calling all their fingers and toes and clearing out the nostrils and they have that first cry, it is for just that moment, a lot of women forget that they have been through so much pain to get this. It's and not just the pain of bringing the book, but also putting their experiences and they're in the process. It, it is, it's, it's different for each person mm -hmm. and each book. Even my own book, each process is, is different. But I will tell you that when that baby, when they pass the baby to me and I'm holding like, yeah, I help with that. You know, I'm just rocking the baby. And, but also too, it binds me to that person in a way that it's almost, I hate to say, it's almost like matrimony. We, we until death do us, the death of that book do us part. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But my whole thing is it, it makes me better. Each one of you guys in tribe, you know, I may be cracking the whip, I may do whatever, but there's none of you all can, can, can't call me and say, sis, you was out of line for that. You know, I sis, you know, you may want to do that. I have more of you guys texting me last night. Did you eat? Did you eat? Did you go to bed? Did there are people who won't let me get off the computer until they know I'm off, you know, go to get off the phone until they know I am off the computer. Right. Uh, because I will forget. And this is a cavalcade thing for me. I'm so focused and driven in the moment that I forget about my physical needs. But my kidneys reminded me as soon as I stood up last night at 11 o'clock, it was like, uh, remember me? But it seems like my whole body shuts down for all normal stuff. I don't get hunger pains. I don't get the little notice that I need to, you know, make that, you know, bathroom business or whatever. That's the driven part. But I have tribe members and I have family members here mm -hmm. that tribe that remind me of the things that I need to do for me. 
And those are the kind of blessings that I need in my life. And every book has a purpose. Every book, that's the first thing I ask all of y'all. What are the reason you are writing this book? What is the message in this book? Because 50 years from now, 100 years from now, if one of your great, great, great grands pick up this book, how is something in that book and your life experience going to help them through that time that they need when they come upon that book? What is your purpose for writing? What is if it's about the money, then you write what everybody else is writing that's out there making money, but that's not who Tribe is. Tribe is writing for not just money. We are writing to make and apply some things and our experiences that somebody is reading it on the opposite end and said, oh yeah, yeah, I needed to hear this just at this moment. I may not get it from a Bible. I may not get it while I'm at church, but I may get it from somewhere I told it because I'm focused on this. I'm not listening to the preacher telling me I'm doing X, Y, Z and I'm going straight to whatever, you know, uh, fire and brimstone. I'm not listening to that, but you got my captive attention when I'm reading a novel and there may be that kernel of spirituality or that kernel of a message in that book like, ah, oh, I needed to hear that. That's what we write for. Okay. Well, Janice. Yes. Considering <laughs> all that Melena has just said in the way of purpose and lessons and blessings, what is something that you've learned from her as her friend and client? Um, two things. I've learned um, loyalty. I've, I've learned friendship that sticks that stays. You you have no idea, Marze, how many times I've been on the phone with Lisa or in the car with Lisa and said, okay, Lisa, so I'm not going to, I don't, I won't necessarily tell her I'm not going to write anymore, but I'm going to stay in the background. I don't want to do this and I don't want to uh, 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 do all the mark. I don't want to, I, I can't, I, it's too much for me. You have no idea how many times I've, even just recently I told her, I said, look here, Lisa, you know, with all you're doing, you have so much going on and, and, and so much that you're moving toward and don't ever let anyone be such dead baggage that they hold you back. You have to keep moving forward. And I told her specifically, we, we are friends, have been friends for a long time, we'll always be friends. I said, but my, I, I'll never let my friendship cause me to expect you to drag me along behind you. It, 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 you keep doing what you need to do and I'll catch up when I can because I know I can't, I'm not at her level. I can't keep up with that pace so I have to move at the pace where I am. But, and, <laughs> and when I told her that her response is, yeah, I hear you, but I'm not listening to you. Right. So as she, you know, so she, and, and, and the, the translation is, um, I know she's saying, I know you think that you have only this much to give into it, but I see more that you have, that you can be in, in all. So she is always going to be there uh, pushing for you to just bloom into your very best. Um, and so I've learned that, that uh, as far as business, but I've also learned just friendship, just a genuine friendship, someone who um, hurts when you hurt or wants to hurt somebody, when you hurt, you know, they want to come after somebody, um, but also friendship who, who is happy when you are happy. I, I just got that with her. Um, and I'm thankful. I appreciate her for that gift. Now, I understand that you're doing a reading as well. Would you like to read an excerpt while we have this time? Certainly. <laughs> and um, since you mentioned Uncle Bubba, then I will do one that has Uncle Bubba. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, from No Right Way to Do a Wrong Thing. That was my first novel. Um, so what's happening is Val and her husband, Kurt, have had this huge blowout. They've been having it a while about children. She wants them and he keeps putting it aside. Well, wait until the business is better. Wait until this, wait until that. And she, you know, gives him that time. But then while she's patiently waiting, it turns out that his mistress is pregnant and shows up on their doorstep so oh we got problems now oh, yeah. so um of course there was a big blowout and everything and now kurt has left the house so val has called her twin brother Dwayne and her uncle bubba to come over to the house you know she loves these men she knows that they are there for her and you know i just need to I, I just need my my guys here you know to walk me and help me through this so this is that's the scene that i'm setting for you okay 
I know you're not walking around in broad daylight with a shotgun, Val gasped. Uncle Bubba stopped on the porch and leaned on his cane. It ain't real, Val. She caught his arm and yanked him inside the house, scanning the area for nosy neighbors. It's real enough to get you shot if the police see you with it. And it's real enough to keep that husband of yours in line if he comes back here acting a fool, Uncle Bubba replied. I used to respect that boy, but I don't know what's gotten into him. I bet you if I put some lead in him though, that'll tighten him up real good. Get his head on real straight. Her twin brother Dwayne walked in the front door, arms loaded with overnight bags. And you, Val scolded as Dwayne kicked the door closed. Why'd you let Uncle Bubba come out of the house with that thing? I'll keep a close eye on him, Dwayne promised. He can't hurt anybody with it anyway, unless he uses it to beat them over the head. Uncle Bubba nodded, yeah, that gets my vote. He snickered as he eased down on the couch. Val, come watch a movie with me. You need to relax. He scooted over on the couch and Val curled up beside him. She awoke two hours later to a room that was completely dark, except for the brightness of the screen on the TV. Ha, <laughs> told you you needed to rest, Uncle Bubba said. You didn't slobber on me, did you? He inspected his sleeve. She gave him a playful nudge, then pried herself off of the sofa. Headlights in the driveway and the unmistakable hum of Kurt's SUV made her whole body tense up. Kurt, Dwayne, Uncle Bubba, the shotgun. <laughs> Nothing but trouble waiting to happen. Uncle Bubba called for Dwayne. Pass me my piece, boy. Dwayne went straight for the shotgun. Val went straight for the police for the phone. I'm calling the police, she said, as Kurt's key slid in the first of the two locks. Val, put that phone down, Uncle Bubba said as he took the weapon from Dwayne. We got this under control. She shivered, but relented. Uncle Bubba, that is just a toy gun, right? He didn't bother to answer. <laughs> Dwayne took up a position behind the door. Val stood frozen in place, praying that yellow crime scene tape wouldn't soon decorate her home. The second lock clicked and Kurt entered the semi-dark house. He felt for the switch on the wall and Uncle Bubba cleared his throat as soon as the ceiling light came on. Kurt's gaze traveled from the old man to the shotgun he held at his side. Dwayne stepped from behind the door. Kurt glared at the two men like they were bullies on the playground. Did you have to get involved in our business? Dwayne positioned himself protectively in front of Val. The police coming to this camp is our business. Peeking around Dwayne's sturdy body, Val asked, why are you here? Kurt's gaze remained locked on Dwayne. You heard the girl, Uncle Bubba prodded. What you want? I just needed to get a few things, Kurt said. Well, me and Dwayne here are gonna do you like the cops probably did you earlier, Uncle Bubba advised. We're gonna escort you through the house so you can grab what you need and get to stepping. Dwayne took a few steps forward and reached for Kurt's elbow. And Kurt wrenched away. Man, don't put your hands on me. This is my house, he said, clenching his teeth and thumping his chest with his index finger. You wait one cotton picking minute, Uncle Bubba said, raising the stock of the shotgun to his shoulder and cocking the pump action. All sound left the room. Not willing to give Kurt the satisfaction of seeing her blatant terror, Val jutted her chin out and crossed her arms, matching Dwayne's stance. She motioned for Dwayne to take Kurt to get his stuff. A brisk burst of air swept over her as the two men passed her. Uncle Bubba brought up the rear with his phony shotgun still trained on Kurt. And three minutes later, Val's two guardian angels were ushering Kurt to the front door. Dwayne opened it saying, we're gonna be here for a hot minute, so don't even think about coming back and starting some mess. Looking like a ram ready to butt heads with a rival male, Kurt barged past his brother-in-law. 
Uncle Bubba said, you heard my nephew. Don't start none, won't be none. As he closed the door, he crooned, bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? <laughs> That's from No Right Way to Do a Wrong Thing. Oh, I love that scene. <laughs> Now, Melena, I know that you're going to do a reading as well, but I'd like to, I'm going to pose the same question to you. What things have you learned from Janice and your friendship and uh, having her as a client? I like pe people who will tell me when my shit stinks. Oh, okay. I like people who, you know, tried, even though people say fearless leader, they don't realize I'm not trying to uh, groom followers. I mm -hmm. need other leaders, which is why I push some of y'all to start your own tribe. Even kicking and screaming, people are like, oh, no, you can't, I'm not doing my job if you can't leave me and start and do your thing and grow this brand. Right. And that means sometimes telling me, you know, uh, Lisa, this is beyond, help me through this, or Lisa, this is beyond my this, that, and the other. That's why, if you notice, I've been pushing you guys to work with each other. Right. You know, it gives me a, but the thing about it is with, with Janice, friendship the literary we have this bond we have this i've watched her grow from i thought i said i corrupted her because she read the pleasures on mine and all of a sudden she started talking a different language than um uh, uh how can i say it about herself as a woman and about her marriage that was that was happening at that time and i i believe when she wrote king of lawndale that she wrote in her own king because he embodies almost everything that she wrote about in King of Londale. And she was given a word uh, from one of our pastors who has the gift of sight and says, there's a man, that's all he wants to do is love you. Love you. My pastor told her that. She didn't even go to my church. She told Janice that there's a man out there, all he wants to, but the thing about it is when she wrote King of Londale, she put it in print. She could envision it because she, she put it in print. And then when he materialized, it's like, oh, it was him. Everything. He's been here all along, but she had to release all of that. This is her year of Jubilee. Yes. This is her year. She had those seven years of, of burden, seven times seven or, or seven times two or seven times three. However many times it happened, this is the makeup year. You have the people who have the, the appetite, what do you call it? The appetizer husband, the uh, entree husband. Right now she's on the dessert husband. Nice. You understand what I'm saying? But yeah. she got to see what that was like as she was living through editing our books and all of these things. And that's kind of how it came to pass. And I, I'm loving that, but I'm gonna, because of the time, I'm gonna jump into my uh, reading really quickly. It's uh, from Loving Me For Me. Oh, love that yeah. book. Yeah, this love is the part where 14 year old Rain was forced to get up in front of the church and apologize for shaming her mother by getting pregnant. She complied, but was angry the entire time, especially since she was fully aware of the things going on behind the scenes. While she still held the microphone, she paused and then ended her apology with, but I have a question though. Is it only the girls you want to apologize because you can see what we've done? She rubbed her hand over her extended belly as the question drew murmurs of discontent. Dawn got pregnant, <coughs> excuse me. No one asked Mason to come up here and apologize. Alexa got knocked up. No one made Eric say he was sorry. My brothers weren't made to get up here either. The congregation roared with disapproval aimed directly at her. Some of them stood raising their voices in contempt. Now I know it doesn't excuse what I did. She held up a hand to signal that they should be quiet because she wasn't done. But I'm just saying, Brother Harold's been sleeping with Sister Odessa's husband for the past two years and everybody knows it. She focused on the golden man whose face turned a magnificent red. Oh, and I didn't see Sister Justine and Brother Martin up here apologizing for getting busy in the choir room during rehearsal when the pastor's wife called him a few months ago. Now you just wait a minute, Brother Martin stood, shaking his fist at rain. His wife yanked him down on the pew then slapped her purse on top of his head, nearly knocking him unconscious. Sister Justine left her husband's side and tried to run from the church. Her exit was blocked by the ushers who seemed to be having a grand old time with all of the skeletons creaking out of the closet and running up the church aisle as if the devil was on their heels. One of them, Sister Dorothy, even managed to give Rain the thumbs up sign so she'd keep the party going. 
I'm just saying, let's keep it fair, Rain said, ducking out of the reach of Deacon Jones, who was a, making an attempt to snatch the microphone from her. A sin's a sin. I think everybody should take a turn up here. She gestured toward Deacon Byrne as she slid up the aisle, managing to still be heard over the chaos. I mean, that is a whole bottle of Dr. Tishner's in your pocket because you need a little nip of that 80 proof every now and then. Nobody needs fresh breath that bad. She winked at him and even laughed. And even his wife laughed. She said, my mama told me that one. The entire <laughs> congregation was now on their feet in heated conversation, some arguing about the truth. She let spill. Choir members hastily left their seats. A few of them managed to tip out of the back door to the lower level before she let loose on them too. The usher board had closed the rear door so no one could run out that way. One of them sprinted down the aisle to get to the choir entrance to block that as well. Rain slid a sly look to her fuming mother who was dressed in pristine white uniform of the pastor's personal nurse and was sitting in a special seat near the pulpit. And the only reason my mother's on the nurse's board, Rain said, keeping a steely glare on her mother, taking care of the pastor, getting his water and handkerchiefs, fixing all that good food and baking those sweet potato pies, especially for him is cause she's hoping for a little sin of her own. I knew it, the first lady said, waggling a finger at Thelma, wide brim hat tipping almost off her head. She nearly climbed over the pew, aiming to get to Rain's mother. Two women, women nearest her held the stout woman back. Rain looked toward the red-faced pastor who was fit to be tied and doesn't look like he's turning down nothing but his collar. So maybe I should pass the mic to him. Come to think of it, Brother Jimmy, Brother Patrick, and Brother Russell need some time up here too. She moved up the middle aisle and back toward the pulpit, ignoring the three men in question. Each of them offered me some money for the baby's sake. That's what they said. But they wanted a little something in return. They seemed really happy that I was pregnant because that meant I couldn't get knocked up again. She swept a gaze across the congregation as Sister Dolores yanked the microphone from her hand. Rain dashed toward the choir stand to snatch another one from where the organist played. And they're not the only ones up in here who did that. I got nine offers from church men alone and close to $9,536.50. She waggled an index and, and don't forget the 50 cents. That's a lot of dough, especially for a sinner like me. She shrugged as if she hadn't set the church on holy fire. So let's be <laughs> fair about this sin thing. That's enough, young lady, the pastor said from the pulpit. Rain fake left, then moved and she was in that far left aisle blocked in by a few folks who were grinning at her efforts and didn't let the deacons near her. Oh, so I'm a young lady now. When you told my mother that she needed to bring her little whore before the church and apologize, no, he didn't, Sister Mabel shouted, but you didn't make your nieces get up here when they got pregnant or any of the boys right here in church that made them this way. I can count about 12 so far and that's not including the ones who had abortions. But wait a minute, that counts as a sin too, but it's not one that you can see. So mm -hmm. which is it, whore or young lady? Either way, I'm just saying, a sin is a sin. Let the church say amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. I know we're uh, running out of time. Can you tell everyone again where you can be found, Lena Kai? I'm going to drop that in the chat. Drop uh, it in the chat. Uh, LenaKai.com, but they've been getting the emails and everything from me, okay. but I'm on Instagram. Uh, if you follow my giveaway in the, what I dropped in the chat, people said laugh out loud. Somebody said, Lord, amen. Loved it. Okay. Yes. But I will drop it in the chat because I'm going to keep this moving. Okay. We have, um, the next guest that is already on, but that was an excerpt from Loving Me For Me. Janice, tell everyone where they can find you. Author Janice M. Allen on Facebook, author Janice M. Allen on Twitter, author Janice M. Allen on Instagram. <laughs> all right then, and you're also on BookBub and also on Goodreads, so you can find us all over those places. I will drop, I did drop her giveaway into the chat earlier, so make sure you can follow there because she's giving away free books as well and Amazon cards. So. We've got that going. So we thank you so much. Uh, Janice, you, you want to stay online or you want to go into the backyard? In the backyard. Okay. <laughs> thank you. See it right there. Thank, thank you. you so much for everything. And Marze, thank you as well. Oh, you want to stay on or you want to hit the backyard too? I'm going to hit the backyard too. 
All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate everything. All right.